All right, we are live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Chris, and this is my channel. We love comics, and I wanted to do a video. Might be a little long. I'm not sure. Depends on um, if anybody asks any questions or anything. But I wanted to give some of my tips and advice of how to be able to get comic books, even if you might have a financial struggle. And I'm going to make this something where um, I'm not going to put on my camera, so but I will put something visual for the people that want to have something to look at. But I want this to be more of an audio, so this way, if you're driving, eating dinner at work or something, you could listen to this and not have to focus on any images if you don't want to because it's not needed. So I want to welcome everybody coming in. Lewis, Reggie, nice to see you. James, comic lover, Captain Crunch, Christopher, Yoshi. So basically, and no, you definitely don't want to be borrowing books and never bring them back because that's called theft, and we definitely don't want to do that. But um, what I want to talk about, is based and inspired on the video that I did earlier this morning. And if you haven't seen it, I hope you do. And it reveals, it's an unboxing of a mega key comic that I got today. And um, a couple of people were saying things like, oh, you know, I wish I could get that book. I'll never be able to get that book. Things like that. And when I hear that, I can relate to it because we've all been there. We've all had that that thing in our mind of we can't do something. And I want to try and help people to change their mindset and think of different ways to be able to get the things that you want and think of it in a different way. So hopefully this will help people to be able to um, just think in a different way because I want to make this perfectly clear. I am not a wealthy man. I do not have tens of thousands of dollars in my bank account. I, believe it or not, live pretty much almost paycheck to paycheck and have lived that way since I've gotten into my own businesses since basically 2001. But even through all that, I've never had a time where even when situations happened, like, for example, my oil burner broke or one of our um, heating pipes burst or car problems, there hasn't been a time where I haven't needed to come up with money even at the last second and did not find a way to make sure that those problems didn't get taken care of. Now, the first advice I will give, and this can go for more than just comic books. It could go to anything towards life. The biggest thing that I find that we all do at some point, and maybe it's the way we're all brought up, maybe it's television, maybe it's just the way people make us feel, is we always are taught to be so negative that the glass is half empty, saying that, oh, you can't, or you won't, or there's no way. And we create that mindset. And it limits our ability to want to do something. And I'll give you a prime example. If you're a person that is looking for work, and you say to yourself, oh, there's nothing out there, and no matter what I do, I can't get a job. I mean, there's so many people looking for jobs. Why do I even bother? And a lot of people think that way. And I've been there myself. Now, let me ask you this. What of the t these two scenarios would give you the best chance to get a job. Sitting at home pouting, saying you can't do something so you don't try, or getting up and doing everything in your power to find the job that you want and will not take no for an answer. Which one do you think is going to give you the better chance? Now, obviously, it's going to be the second one. There are no guarantees but you have a much better chance when you change the mindset. And this is the one of the things I want people to think of when it comes to comic books. As much as I love and you love comic books, we all know that comic books, we could live without them. I mean, if you never owned a comic book, you're not going to die. You're not going to fly off the planet. You are not going to be all of a sudden shot by the military. So these things are are desirables. They are things that we want, but definitely not things that we need. So the first thing you have to say is 
I want something. And understand, it's a want. It's not a need. Like, no one sits there in life that says, I need an Amazing Fantasy 15. You need food. You need air. You need water. You need companionship. You need a, a roof over your head. Those are things we need. We don't need these books. We want them. So the first thing we do have to do is understand, or what I like to call understand, that these are trivial things. These are things we don't have to have to survive, but we want them because of why. They make us feel good. So you have to understand the logic and the reasoning first of why you're getting anything in life, because if you don't pay attention to those things, that's where that emotion can come in, where you feel destroyed if you don't get something, or you feel depressed if you can't have it, or if it's out of reach, you, you feel less of a person. Now, whether you have a dollar in your pocket or a trillion dollars in your bank account, we are all human beings. So never forget that. Never let the amount of green pieces of paper in your bank account or in your wallet define you as a human being. Okay, so we need to put things in a proper perspective first off, because when you take away that seriousness of it, that makes things, first of all, a little bit easier to say, okay, these are books. I don't need them. I could survive without them. So it's not that serious if I don't get them. So if you fix that part of the mindset first, it's going to make it a little bit more fun, a little bit easier. And that's what we want this to be. Now, can you make money off of comics? Absolutely. But you don't want that as your primary goal because, like I've said so many times, when you use your emotion in a negative way, you will basically manifest the very things that you believe in from your heart's perspective. Now, this is not conspiracy theory stuff. This is not made-up stuff. This is actual science. You can create your own reality based on your own personal perception of what you perceive to be true. Just like, for example, if you believe you cannot get a job, well, you're not going to make any effort to get that job. You're not going to go out and get that job, and you're going to create the very thing that you may not want, but you in your heart have believed to be true. And that's why I try and tell people there's a reason why there's the word lie right smack in the middle of the word belief. So, there's all about these simple things that most people take for granted, most people don't think about, or most people roll their eyes and think is crazy. Those are the people who will forever want, and not, well, like I said, what I like to call understand, that you will create the reality of your belief system. So if you say you can't, well, life is going to give you the very thing that even though you don't want, your heart says, I can't give something. So understand your power. Is Your power is so powerful that you can deny yourself your ability to change your own personal world based on your own belief to not believe it, is, it, it exists or it's crazy. So those that don't understand actual science and don't understand how magnetism works, you don't have to understand a magnet to know that it's going to attract metal to it. Whether you believe it to be true because you don't see it happening and it's basically a rock that's made from the earth pulling in something close to it, whether you understand it or not is irrelevant to what is. So my thing is get rid of that belief system because whether you believe in what I'm saying or not is irrelevant to what is. So the mindset is the first thing you have to change because if you look at my videos, you will see video after video of key issue comics. Now, like I said, I don't have tens of thousands of dollars in my account, but I view this as a game. Now, games are meant to be difficult because, let's put it this way, if you had a puzzle that had two pieces and you only needed to put those two pieces together to formulate that picture, how often would you break apart that game and play with it? you would probably play it once at best. It wouldn't be very fun. Why? Because there's no challenge. The problem is most people view challenge as a scary thing, as a difficult task, instead of seeing it for the adventure that it is. Because I guarantee you, if you've ever played a video game in your life, you may come to a level that's so hard it frustrates the living daylights out of you, but imagine how elated you feel 
when after days, weeks, or months of playing that game, looking up cheat codes, finding the patterns, and finally succeeding, how excited you feel when you finally got over that hurdle. So this is what I'm talking about. If you don't have a comic that you want or anything in your life, don't sit there and say, I'll never get it. Because then, like I said, through magnetism and how the, the universe actually works, you are going to end up getting the very thing that you believe, even though it's the opposite of what you want, because you've said you'll never get it. So the world is proving you right. You've created your world to prove that you're right. You will always be right. And that's why you see, even in this political world, both sides seem to be 100% right. Because it's a matter of perception and their ideology and their belief system. So that's how two people on opposite sides can both think they're right. It's because they manifest their own belief system. The world creates that very belief to concur with what they think. And they are always given the things that will enable them to feel that what they're thinking is true. And that's why you can go from one point of view at one point to an absolute opposite and be right both times. I mean, how many people, for example, just in politics, at one point may have been a liberal and then all of a sudden started looking into things differently and all of a sudden said, wow, I'm really a conservative or vice versa. Now, when you were a liberal going to a conservative, at one point you had those liberal beliefs. But then if all of a sudden you start looking into things differently and you become a conservative, now you have that conservative belief. So what changed? The conservatives are still conservative. Liberals are still liberals. It's your mindset of what you chose to hook your magnet to. So that's why I cannot stress enough the first absolute thing you need to change if you want to start getting the things that you love is changing your mindset and understanding, or again, like I say, understanding, that you can create your own power. And again, you're so powerful, you can say, I don't have it, and never turn on that light switch and wonder why you don't have that power because it will confirm the very thing that you say you don't have or you don't believe. So, once you get that out of the way, and that's the most difficult part, that is the part that 99% of the world will never even get past because they will automatically dismiss it, they will roll their eyes, they will say, I don't believe it, and then wonder why they never get past the first step. Now, the next thing. We have all been given this big muscle in between our ears. It's called the brain. And a brain can do things without you thinking. In other words, your heart will beat whether you think about it or not. You will breathe in oxygen whether you have to think about it or not. There are certain things that the brain does instinctually. But then there's the parts where you have to use that brain to come up with things. And if you ever notice, some of the best inventions in life came from our most tragic times. You ever realize that most of our technological advances in our, in our species' lifetime is during war or during times where man and woman struggle? So a lot of times we don't give ourselves enough credit to say that we can do something because especially when things are going good, there's no incentive. That's why even if you think of this from a political point of view, just imagine if the world gave you everything. You had a, a machine that could create everything that you want by a push of a button or just the thought in your mind. Do you know the world would decline from that point? That would be the peak of humanity and we would go on a decline from there? Because what incentive would you have to achieve anything if you can have everything that you want at the push of a button? So because we are humans, we thrive on struggle. And when times are too easy, we, we seem to forget the true power of what we have. And we are the type that sits around watching TV, eating bonbons, typing on a computer, and pretending that our lives have no meaning and wonder why that's the case. So when it comes to something as simple as comics, and again, you can apply this to your entire life. It's just this is a comic book channel, so we're going to base it more on the comic books is if you view it, first of all, by erasing that original mindset and realizing you have the control whether you want something or not, it's how bad do you want it. Now you have to put in the effort. You can't sit there and say, okay, I'm going to change my mindset and I'm just going to sit here and like a magnet, I'm going to pull everything in. 
Because remember, a magnet needs to be close to something to be able to attract it. It can't just be there and all of a sudden every piece of metal on Earth attracts itself to it. So in other words, you got to become mobile. you got to start making things happen. You cannot win a race by sitting down on the track or never going to the track because you said there's no way you're going to win. Well, then what a surprise. You created the very thing that you said you couldn't do. Get in the race. And if you lose, don't see it as failure. See it as, what do I need to do to improve? Use that brain. If you don't have the money for something, does that mean you could never have it? Just imagine if you're a smoker and you quit smoking and you say, instead of spending all of those hundreds, if not thousands of dollars a year, because believe it or not, depending on how many packs of cigarettes you smoke, you probably spend a couple of thousand dollars a year on cigarettes. And you say, instead of putting that money towards cigarettes or alcohol or gambling or something, I'm going to put that money in a jar. And just imagine in maybe five years, you would have enough money to buy an Amazing Fantasy 15. The problem is, like I said, when people say they can't do something, they don't do something. And then they only think, well, the only way I can get something is by buying it. Well, if that's the case, how did we survive for thousands of years before money was ever invented? Not everything has to be based on money because money is basically a debt note. It keeps you impoverished, believe it or not. There's always a way. Can you do a trade with somebody? Can you offer a service that you provide? Can you maybe have somebody do a payment plan? How many of you have actually gone to a comic book store and saw, like you see on the screen, you see Fantastic Four number 48, which is a pretty expensive book at this point. Let's say your local comic book store has that on their, on their wall of amazing comics, and they're selling it for $1,000. You don't have it. Well, what if you said to the person, listen, what if I gave you $100 a month or $100 a week or $25 a, 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 a month? Would I be able to pay that off and then get that book at the end? I guarantee you they won't charge you interest like a bank would. It's how you use your mind. The mind is a muscle, just like your biceps, your triceps, your lats, your quads. And being a massage therapist, I know a lot more muscles than even most bodybuilders. But my point is, if you don't exercise your biceps, they become weak. Well, the same thing goes with your brain. If you do not use your brain, you lose its abilities or you slow them down or at the very least they become weaker. And because so much of the world is glorifying celebrities and people who catch baseballs and throw footballs, we seem to think our lives are failures because we don't have as much green pieces of paper as they do, which means you're less of a human being. One of the things I learned about myself in my mid-20s, and there's a reason why I'm talking about this stuff, because it does boil down to emotionally how you think about yourself. I used to be made fun of all the time when I was a kid. And that's why sometimes I even get sensitive here, especially on my original channel, because it kind of brings back stuff when I was a child. I, even to this day, like years ago, I couldn't handle it the right way. That's why if people want to know why I get defensive sometimes, this is why. But at one point, I became, in my early 20s, I became very suicidal. And I was at the point where I wanted to end it all to end the pain. And I'm sure a lot of people have thought that way. And what changed my mind is I pictured myself dead in a grave and all of the people that cared about me were hovering around my grave looking down crying. And I started laughing. And I said, there I was at the lowest point of my life where I wanted to end everything and just eliminate that pain. And I was actually at that point where I could have just pulled the trigger or done whatever and ended it all. I was more concerned about the loved ones that I was hurting. And I realized I would never put myself down again and created the confidence based on why would I want to beat myself up when there's plenty of other mean people to be that way. And so many people think so negatively about themselves. There are reasons why there are people, even in the comic book community, that are nothing but angry people. 
whether they admit it or come out with it or not, whether they do it sneakily or not, you know, by their deeds you shall know them. But negative creates negative. But here's the thing that most people don't think because they stop there. Positive creates positive. There's a reason why the yin and yang symbol has a little bit of each color, white and black, light and dark, in both aspects of it. And it's even throughout, even though it looks like it's thicker on one part. It all is about balance. And if you choose to be a mind is a glass is half empty type of person, you will always have that half empty glass. So the point I'm making about all of this stuff is, yes, these are comics. Yes, it's not the end of the world if you can't get one. Make it into a game, but change your mindset. Don't say, I can't get something. Say, what do I need to do to be able to get that? Place a goal, even if it takes five years. The problem is, in this world of instant gratification, of instant food, of instant coffee, of instant messages, people have become spoiled to the point where if they don't get something now, they've considered themselves a failure. Well, here's the thing. In baseball, they used to talk about, like, for example, Ricky Henderson, who was the all-time stolen base leader. He actually slowed the game down by being fast because they concentrated so much on his speed that it actually slowed the game down. So ironically, you'd be amazed at how quickly things will speed up when you actually see life for what it is. You ever hear the expression, time flies when you're having fun? I mean, research quantum physics and quantum mechanics. You will actually stay younger if you are happy more often because time actually speeds up because time is not constant. It's Time here is based on the rotation of a planet around a sun and a planet that goes around us, the moon. Well, what if you were further away from the sun? Or what if you had two moons or no moons? Time is not what you think it is. So you can actually bend it, alter it, and change it depending on your mood. That's why if you're at a funeral, it seems like forever. But if you're at a party, you seem like you've been there for five minutes and you already have to go home even though you've been there for six hours. These are things people don't want to think about or don't realize, and they wonder why they're always so miserable and angry and depressed it's because the world is trying to keep you that way because it's easier to control a bunch of people who hate themselves or hate everybody else and does not realize their true potential so if you want a book you say to yourself what do i need to do to get that book how long will it take and if you're not willing to wait five years then you're never going to do what it takes so you will create the very thing that you say you can't do even though that's the exact opposite of what you want. And that's why, for example, there will come a day on this channel you will see an Amazing Fantasy 15. Now, I don't have the money to be able to buy even a coverless Amazing Fantasy 15. So with most people, they would say, well, I don't have the money, I'll never get that money, and then never try and get it. Well, hello, what a surprise, you never got one. Again, you create your own world based on your own belief system through your heart, what you truly feel, not what you say or pray for or hope for. Don't hope for things. So that's why you see all the time, like for example, the comic I showed earlier this morning, and I hope you watch it because I'm getting less views these days, it is a duplicate of something I already have. What does that mean? That I can use that as trade bait to be able to still have the comic but be able to trade one and get something better by combining a bunch of things. And that is what I will eventually do. I've created enough nice comics, very valuable comics, where I have two and three of each one where I can actually make a package of several key issues like Hulk 181, like Fantastic Four number 48, and others, to get that amazing Fantasy 15. It's just, what are you willing to do to make something happen? And again, it's in the mindset. And I'll give you a prime example. This is going to be a weird example, but it will, it will bring it home. If I was to say to you, and I think I've used this example before, it might have been on my old channel, or it's definitely on my other channel, but if I were to say to you, 
you have 30 days to bring me $1 million, how many of you would say there's no way and would automatically dismiss it and say, I can't do it? Well, what do you think will happen when you say that? You won't do anything. You won't get them $1 million. So you created the very thing that you automatically dismissed. You didn't think about it. You didn't process it. You automatically say, there's no way. I can't do it. Well, there you go. You quickly changed your world based on your perception. So now let's change the scenario. And I hope this never happens. But let's say, let's say you're married with two chi children. Let's say there are three and two years old. You have a wonderful cat and a wonderful dog and a beautiful husband or wife. And I kidnap all of them. And I send you a little DVD that shows them all tied up. And I say to you, you have 30 days to bring me $1 million or the next DVD you get will be the witnessing of me slaughtering everything that you love. Now, obviously, I'm not going to do that, but I'm using this as a per perspective. Now, think about your mindset now. Do you Are you going to automatically say, well, I guess they're going to die because I can't do it and you're going to give up? Or do you think all of a sudden now, because the priority has changed, you're going to do everything in your power to make sure that million dollars is made within those 30 days? Well, think about it. What has changed? The goal is still the same. You have 30 days to come up with a million dollars. That has not changed. What has changed is the incentive. You went from I can't do it to I must do it. So the person that said they can't, they won't. The person that says, I'm going to do whatever it takes to make that happen, you will literally do whatever it takes to make it happen, and that goal will be achieved. As a matter of fact, it probably won't take you 30 days to get it. Games are fun. Games are supposed to be hard. If you ever saw the, um, the baseball movie with Tom Hanks, I forget the name of it, but it's based on a World War II where the men were fighting in World War II and they had women playing baseball. I think a league of their own. And at one point, the female catcher near the end of the movie is leaving the sport even though she was the best player. And she wasn't being honest of why she was leaving. And all the team is getting ready to get on the bus and she's going to leave with her husband. And Tom Hanks, who is the manager, is basically trying to convince her to come on and she says no but she won't really be honest as to why and she says well it's really hard and tom hanks turns around and says yes a league of her own thank you wishing i was fishing um and tom hanks says it's supposed to be hard otherwise everybody would do it the point is if a game is easy just imagine if you've played let's say for example skyrim because i'm sure a lot of people have played skyrim before just imagine if you turn on the game of Skyrim, all you have to do is walk three feet down the screen and you win the game. Would it be fun? You don't have any enemies. You don't have to worry about any paths to find, no treasures to find, no puzzles to complete, no nothing. You literally have to walk three feet down the game and you win the game and the game is over. Would that be fun? Would you play it again? Would you brag about it for years? No. So if you don't have, for example, a comic book that you want, don't sit there and say, oh, this is too hard. Think of it as, okay, I'm about to play an amazing game of hide and seek. And right now, let's say Amazing Fantasy 15 is your goal. Well, it's hiding pretty darn good. Your job is to find it. You can't find what you're not looking for. But realize the fun of it is the playing of the game. Here's the game. At the end of your quest is the prize, which is the comic. So how do you get there? You're Mario trying to save the princess. If the princess was right there on the first screen, how boring a game would that be? So appreciate the game. Appreciate the challenge. Do you really think it's impossible to get a comic book? I mean, let's put it this way. If somebody wanted to be an evil prick, they could literally rob somebody's house and steal it. It could be that easy. Although I don't recommend anybody doing anything that immoral and that illegal. 
but it could literally be that easy. You could literally just take, you can go to a Comic-Con and literally take it off the shelf and run away. Again, don't do that. It's how bad do you want the game to be? How do you win Mario Brothers? How do you rescue the, the princess if you say, oh, the game's too hard and you never turn the game on? Do you think you're ever going to save the princess? Again, you create your own reality. And people, when they hear that stuff, they think, oh, that's tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorist mumbo jumbo. Instead of realizing, yeah, I can't win the game if I don't play it. Like the lotto says, you got to be in it to win it. You can't win if you don't play. So turn it into a game, but have a strategy, have a plan. Understand the laws of attraction, which are part of it, but not all of it. You cannot literally just sit there and think of a car, and all of a sudden you're going to look outside your house and that car is going to magically appear. No. You have to make the work. You have to make the effort. You have to use your brain. So if you want something bad enough, stop saying you can't get it. Start saying, what do I need to do to get it? Say, okay, this book costs $1,000. Can I save $100 a month or $50 a month or $25 a month or $5 a month and put that $5 aside? So instead of wasting it by going to a strip club or wasting it by buying your 30th pair of sh shoes or wasting it by smoking a cigarette, you put that money to better use. It may take you a while, but like they say, all good things come to those who wait. The expression does not say all good things come to those who sit there and pray and hope or sit on their butt and wait for things to come to them. If you're hungry, you go and get food. Sit there, go on your knees and pray for food and watch how quick you starve to death. The idea is if you want anything in life, you have to first change your mindset and you have to understand or, again, like I say, understand that it's only a game. Once you achieve the goal, that whole thing is done. You're excited when you get that book you've always wanted. How many of you have been trying to get a certain comic or a certain thing and were thrilled to death when you finally won it? When you see that countdown on eBay going three, two, one, you make that last second bid and you become the winner. How excited are you? Well, you know what? That is the highest point of the excitement you will have on that book. So think about that. You will only go down from there. I seriously doubt you're hugging that book every moment of your life. And if you are, that's kind of weird. But my point is, you are most excited when you finally got the very thing you've been hunting for. Once you get it, it's not the same ever again. Why do you think people need to continually get new things all the time? It's that high. And what is that high doing? Replacing something inside you that can never be filled. You cannot fill a black hole. Why do you think people get addicted to drugs or get addicted to sex or even get addicted to collecting things like comics? And once they get one, they're never satisfied. They always want more because there's something internally that is not being addressed and you are trying to fill it with something that gives you temporary pleasure. Does that remind you of a drug? It's a different sort of high. But once you understand those things, you can change it. You can create it. Your life is a thing of clay. You'll never create a statue if you don't start molding it. Do you think if you sit there with a lump of clay and wish for it to become a beautiful piece of art, that's it's magically going to happen? Or if you hope for it? Or if you get somebody else to do it for you? Do you think it's going to look the way you want it to when you have somebody else doing the work for you? So it's not about money. You could be the brokest person in the world. Can you find tin cans and turn them in for their five-cent refund and take 10 years to be able to accumulate enough to get that car you need or that comic book you want? What's stopping you other than you? Because I'm making this promise to you right now. I don't know when, but eventually you will see a video on my channel where I show an Amazing Fantasy 15. 
And unless I win the lottery, it won't be for me being able to afford to buy it. But I'm never going to sit here and say, I can't get it, or why bother? It's too difficult. Well, you've already guaranteed failure. I would rather guarantee or at least attempt success than guarantee failure. So it requires work. And again, in this day and age where there are people that are doing nothing but saying, I can't, or I won't, or it's too hard, or they're looking for instant gratification, they will never achieve their goals because they're always hoping and praying and wishing and sitting on their behinds wondering why not everything in the life is just gravitating towards them. You want to be a magnet? Start acting like one. You get what you project. If you are an evil, nasty, mean person, you will have things that will always give you the reason to be mean and to be nasty and to be evil. But people tend to see things only from the negative point of view instead of realizing that the world and the universe is actually more positive than negative. And I'll show you how. You have the yin, which is, uh, or either side, you'll have the, the darkness as negative, You'll have the light as positive, but you'll always have that middle in between, which is neutral. Well, neutral is more positive than it is negative. Because if you had, let's say, in a physical realm, let's say the negative is a person who murders people. And the, the good is people who save people. If you have the person in the middle, they will neither save nor kill well, that's more good than it is bad because killing is bad. So the neutral says, I won't kill. I may not save, but I won't kill. That's actually more positive than negative. So if you actually look at the yin and the yang and the, the light and the darkness, that middle neutral ground is actually leaning more towards positive, which means the universe actually has more positive energy than negative. But you get what you attract to, whether you believe in it or want it or not. And the best part is, you can change it at any moment. But you can't change it if you refuse to listen or you choose to believe. That's how powerful you are. You're a light switch that doesn't believe you have a light switch. Is it any wonder why you've never found it or never turned it on? So if you want a comic book bad enough, what are you doing to get it? What plan have you made? What deals have you tried to come and create? Because if you have to shovel snow, if you have to build somebody's garage or paint somebody's house or do a political favor, if that's what it takes, then what's stopping you from doing it? You're limited to your ideas and your belief system, and your negative or positive out outlook. Because here's the beautiful thing. If you change the way you are and try something different, if it doesn't work, you can always go back to the way you were. But the funny part is you'll never do that once you understand that there's a difference between viewing a path and actually walking a path. Don't base a path on what somebody else's trip was. You can be whatever you want, which means you could be a saint, or you could be a murderer, or you could be something in between. It's whatever you put your mindset to. But a murderer can all of a sudden become a peaceful person, and a peaceful person can all of a sudden become a murderer. It's all in your mindset. What do you want? If you want something bad enough, why are you putting yourself down? Why are you letting others convince you that they, because they couldn't do it that you can't do it? Instead of being jealous of what everybody else does, why not try and make something achievable to you? So instead of putting you all your energy into jealousy or hatred or negativity, you say, you know what? That person has a comic I would love to have. What do I need to do to get it? Without being dishonest, without being a criminal. If you're spending all of your energy, like some of my haters, they'll spend all their energy on being jealous about what I show or what I speak about or who I am. Whether they admit it or not doesn't matter because no person filled with love and happiness goes and creates that much negativity towards somebody they really don't even know. So that's something they refuse to work on themselves. 
That's why I might have been a little bit more sensitive years ago or had a different set of beliefs years ago, but I'm a much different person. I would like to think more positive and beneficial now than I ever was because I've grown. Stay in kindergarten all your life and wonder why you remain stupid or at the mindset of a kindergartner. You have to get to another level if you want to grow. If you sit there holding your breath and folding your arms saying, I ain't going anywhere, why are you so surprised that things say stagnant? You ever wonder why a river is clear and a lake is green and mucky? It's because a river flows, a river moves. It's not stagnant. You know, a rolling stone gathers no moss. But if you refuse to roll, don't complain you're full of moss. Take responsibility. If you don't have a book that you want or anything in your life, like a relationship or a job or whatever, you say to yourself, instead of saying, oh, it's the president's fault or it's the environment's fault or it's my location or I'm too broke or my car is broken down or something like that, Instead of saying all those negative things that don't help you at all, say, okay, what do I need to do to get out of this hole I'm in? Because believe it or not, you put yourself there. But nobody wants to, you to take responsibility for it. And you notice the ones that give you that kind of advice are the ones trying to sell you something or profit off of you to stay down. I mean, just think of welfare. Welfare sounds great, right? But you need to be very poor to get it, which means... To be able to get that handout, you can't achieve anything in life. So you're always constantly having to stay down with somebody's foot over you saying, if you want this free stuff, you got to stay poor. How is that the American dream? You ever wonder why so many socialists are take, trying to take over this country? They want to give you everything for free and you actually think it's free. All about the mindset, and there are very smart people that know how to manipulate people, especially through emotion, and that's why I try and warn people all the time. Emotions are good when they're positive, but they're not really beneficial to you when all you do is beat yourself down or let other people beat you up. It takes six or seven or eight or 20 people to thumb down my video to create all that negative energy, but it only takes one of you to make my day from saying something positive. So their energy needs to be combined and still hasn't stopped me. And I'll still get my thumbs down on this video just like I'll get others. And that's okay. But their life is full of anger, something to hate, something to be angry about. And I guarantee you whether they admit it or not, they're not living the dream. Because trust me, if you're living the dream, you're not wasting any moment with negativity on others trying to keep them down or trying to hurt them. They'll never admit it. But they'll live their whole lives that way. That's a horrible way to live if you were to ask me. And they may have every comic in their dreams. They might have the dream car, the dream girl, and all this other stuff. I doubt it. But they just may. But if they're still not hang happy, because possessions, you find, do nothing more than clutter. And trust me, I know that. I'm part hoarder. It's a temporary drug that creates problems the more you get into it. It's like any other drug. And if you think of it that way, then you're like, wow, maybe I won't get the Amazing Fantasy 15, but that's okay. I'm enjoying the comics I do have, or I'm enjoying watching other people's channels and viewing the comics that I've always wanted through somebody else's eyes, seeing it from a positive point of view. So this video is not about giving you all these different tips to make it easy. You have to work for it. You have to change mindsets. Well, you don't have to, but you have to choose to if you want these things to be successful. There is no miracle pure, cure. And if there was, it ain't going to be free because somebody's going to patent it and sell it at a very high price for those who can afford it. My advice is free, but it's the reality of the world. You got to work for things. You want to spend your whole life laying in bed and somebody comes and bathes you and showers you and wipes you and feeds you? What kind of life is that? Is it easier? Sure is. Is that a life you want to lead? So if you want a book or anything, what are you doing to get it? And if you're going to automatically miss something because it sounds crazy or it's not something you hear on Fox News or MSNBC or CNN or in a school or in reading in a newspaper, okay. 
So I'm going to leave it at that because I know these videos get too long and I know most people don't like to listen to a lot of long videos and that's okay. This video will be for maybe 10 to 12 people who really understand or want to change their life for something better. The rest may just say, ah, you know, it's nice to hear a video and others will thumb it down or roll their eyes. You will get what you give. If you want to put nothing into the universe, why are you surprised the universe isn't giving you anything back? If you want to sit around on your knees praying all the time, you'll spend your whole life praying. Now, I'm not saying not to believe in a God or anything like that. That's not my point. But I don't think even if there is a God and whatever God you believe in is up to you, I don't think they created you so he could sit there and every time you snap your fingers, they're there to give you what you want. Maybe they made you have free will and independence so you can get the things you want yourself and just be thankful you were created and be thankful you're a good person and a human being who cares. There's always a price to pay. Are you willing to pay it? You know, if there really is whatever God you believe in, I seriously doubt you want to view him as somebody where you just say, I want this and I want that, and they're just supposed to sit there and provide it for you. That's kind of taking advantage of goodwill, don't you think? So anyway, there's a lot of different depths of this video. Some people are going to agree. Very little are going to agree, I can tell you that. Some will listen. Majority will roll their eyes and probably shut it off about 30 minutes ago. If you want things in life, no matter what it is, you have to start changing your mindset, seeing it for what it truly is, play it like a game, enjoy the challenge of the puzzle, the difficulty of the game, and knowing the ultimate goal is to save the princess. You can't do it if you don't play or you give up or you don't make the effort. And it's not that much fun to give up because you're guaranteed to fail. You want any guarantee in life? You can easily be guaranteed to fail. All you have to do is do nothing. See how easy it is to fail? You want to fail? Do nothing. So if you want things easy in life, there it is. You're guaranteed an easy route to failure, and all you have to do is nothing. Is that what you want? If the answer is no, then doing nothing is not the tool you need to build that new life. So I want to thank you all for listening. I want to give today's surprise subscriber shout out. We'll do two today. We'll do Big Lion Cat and Bake the Snake. You two are the surprise subscriber shout out. If you feel this is worthy of a thumbs up, I would love for you to give that. If you think this is a video that some people need to hear, whether they collect comic books or not, and you think some of this advice can help them get on a better path, I hope you will share this video. You're not required to, and I'm not expecting anybody to do anything they don't want. If you want to thumb it down, how about this? Anybody that thumbs it down, how about in the comment section explain why you thumbed it down instead of just doing something negative? Sad part is none, no one will do that because that takes true strength. And those that cower and hide, they do it for a reason. So anyway, I hope this helps somebody. If it does, let me know in the comments section. Check out my other videos if you haven't. Hit subscribe if you would like to be a part of this channel because as you could see here, I talk about more than just comic books because I want people to succeed. Because remember, whether you succeed or fail does not affect me in any way. But it's just nicer to be kind and helpful and considerate. The opposite way doesn't exactly make you a legacy. You want to be easily forgotten in the world? Do nothing. Be evil. Strive for hatred. Watch how quick you're forgotten. Those that are loved are the ones that try to do more than just for themselves. So thank you very much for listening. I always appreciate each and every one of you. 